the skills that are involved in working in a team, the communication skills, the decision making skills, the planning skills. These are the small things that make the biggest difference to the patients. We're all highly variable individuals. We all work within different teams in different settings. We need to look at these things to make sure that we can get the end goal for the patient that's the most effective, the most efficient and the safest. We want doctors who know how to manage their own stress, how to manage their own fatigue, to have the best healthcare professionals delivering care to our patients. Anesthesia has got a long track record of being concerned about safety. When we realised that there was a science, human factors, which could help us understand how those adverse events came about and help us think about what the solutions were going to be for that, it seemed essential that that was the next step for us. Human factors is a multidisciplinary subject studying um, really human performance in relation to tasks and particularly work tasks. I began to work with anaesthetists on, on human factors. This filled a gap, I think, for them in terms of the kind of feedback they wanted to be able to give their trainees and colleagues. There was an, an interview process where experts in anaesthesia around Scotland were asked what behaviours they felt were important in challenging situations. I'm just going to tell Linda a bit more about you, OK, Ellen? We came up with the term ANTS, which stands for Anaesthetist Non-Technical Skills. We tried to use their expert knowledge to begin developing the core set of skills that were essential that went into the ANTS framework. The four categories of ANTS are the cognitive skills of situation awareness and decision making, and the social skills of task management and team working. Have you got any questions, Linda? Anything I've missed out? These skills were focused on because they're specific to the delivery of good, safe anaesthesia. The ANTS taxonomy comes from what expert anaesthetists do when they're working at the top of their game. We want to take our novice anaesthetists and bring them up to that level as quickly as possible. We're going to do a few exercises and we're going to watch some films and practice identifying non-technical skills. We run a half-day training workshop for trainee anaesthetists. In that workshop we cover the, the detail of the ANTS taxonomy and we present different clinical scenarios and show how non-technical skills might affect outcome. Around about the same time, we also put them through their first series of simulations and we run through some core parts of an anaesthetic that we consider to be high risk. Can I have some cricoid pressure, please? A large part of the feedback that we give on that will be on their use of non-technical skills. Okay, well done, Natalie. I'll stop you there. Learning about things like situational awareness, decision making, stress and fatigue, and how to cope with those things, how to be uh, take on a leadership role uh, in theatre, so how to speak up. This is all really invaluable when you transfer that to your practice and learning how to be an anaesthetist in the first few months. I could have tried repositioning the patient once I realised I had a difficult view. In practice, we'd use ANTS in theatre where we might use it as a debriefing tool in order that we can highlight to our trainees how we have facilitated good outcome for our patients. The final part is later on when they go to the National Simulation Centre where we will be looking at really highly complex, difficult cases that are not necessarily going well and be able to think about how to use non-technical skills best to deal with these most challenging cases. human factors and good non-technical skill development is what underpins good patient outcome and that's what the patient who may land up in intensive care really needs. Intensive care is an area where large groups of people come together to work as part of a team, being able to communicate, being able to have a shared understanding about what's happening, being able to plan is important to reduce the harm that may happen to these patients. ECMO is a form of life support and it's there where the non-technical side of things come into play. That's an area we've worked very hard to try and cover um, amongst the medical team and the nursing team. Patient coming off ECMO, patient off ECMO. The 
team that are trained in ECMO feel more confident in the care that they are able to deliver. They are all able to communicate better with each other within handover or if they are having to get the patient ready to go to, for example, to CT scan. Increasing revs, clamp off, that's the patient back on ECMO. Anesthetists work in teams and so taxonomies have been developed for other clinical specialists within the theatre environment, such as surgeons. The human factor are important part of surgical training. So all the surgical uh, trainees go through multiple courses at different level of their training, which will cover all these areas. When we establish a new service, we involve all the team members which will be involved in that service. We have a mock exercise almost uh, every week before we actually started doing inpatient. And that actually helped to build up a relationship with the team and also help to recognize the problem and how to fix those problems. Human Factors has made me a more reflective person, so I now review my performance not only in terms of technical skill or knowledge base, but in all those other non-technical skills that really make a difference. When a day goes really well, I now analyse that day because I want to know why did it go really well. And that means that I can work to recreate that the next day so that Every day is a good day, and every day is a safer day, and I think that's what Human Factors does for us.